Welcome to our learning lab in 15 Minute Oasis. We're going to talk about improving outcomes and bottom line and do that in just 15 minutes. I know it sounds impossible, but it's actually very probable and can be done. Um, in a recent study about PDGM and impact analysis that was conducted by BKD, two similar agencies were compared for revenue impact. Even though Agency B had significantly more institutional referrals, which are those referrals that pay more on the revenue, Agency A had a 28% more favorable outcome. People were shocked with these findings, but as BKD started to drill it down, what they discovered, the big why was functional scoring. In just 15 minutes, we're gonna learn how to improve your outcomes and your bottom line through fast and accurate OASIS scoring using the Access 15-Minute OASIS Guide. So let's get started and let's just take a quick look at where the dollars are basically in clinical groupings. From low to medium is about $280 difference. And when you go to low to high, that's about $485 difference. $501 if you're a wound patient just based on functional level. And by the way, this is the only OASIS level that can be directly impacted by PDGM. So a little tip about scoring before we get into our skit and kind of make this fun and interactive. When you're looking at how you score an OASIS, I like to look at it kind of like this analogy of a car. If you see this car on the right, and we kind of have our, our question here, like an OASIS question would be, the color of the car is what? You have multiple choice. Um, if I'm reading from the top down, I would say red because my mind is gonna pick you know, the thing that meets it closest. I've got three admissions to do today. I'm the Oasis nurse. And as soon as I get to something that looks like it's right, I'm gonna go ahead and select it. However, if I read from the bottom up and I see that is it passion red, which it is, by the way, by the factory? Is it maroon? Is it burgundy or dark red? I may answer passion red or dark red. What that does, number one, is it's gonna improve our revenue based on our score, but it's also gonna improve our ability um, for our star ratings to improve. If you're already at the top of the spectrum, there's nowhere to go. There's no improvement that can be done. But if you're at the bottom, there's a lot of improvement can, that can be done. So let's start looking for some OASIS clues. And we're gonna start with that on referral. The minute that physician hands you a referral, faxes it over or sends it by your EMR, there's multiple clues about that patient. We're able to see a history and physical. We're able to see um, a med sheet. Um, we're also able to see maybe physical therapy and occupational therapy notes. We're gonna know a lot about the patient before we ever get in the home. Our next big clue starts with the phone call. Hello? What? I, I, I can't hear you. So from immediately before I even ask a question or have a conversation with Mr. Allen, you know he probably looks more like the patient on the left than he does with the patient on the right. Let's meet Mr. Allen and start our OASIS clues. Mr. Allen, this is Tammy Ross. I'm with ABC Home Health Agency, and your doctor has asked that I visit you and perform an assessment from home, for home health. I see you were in the hospital recently. Can you please get your discharge paperwork ready for me? That's the paper that the nurse gives you. All of your medications, even the ones that you take over the counter like Tylenol, in your insurance card for me to take a look at when I get in your home. Oh, what? what? Who, who's this again? Okay, I'll, I'll see if I can find them. It's, it's going to take me a while. My back has been killing me from being in the hospital bed, and I don't move as fast as I used to. All right, already a couple of clues. He's in pain. He's not moving as fast as he used to. He's probably got some ambulation or transfer problems. As I drive to his home, of course my GPS is gonna go out as soon as I turn on the street, 
I've been doing home care for over 30 years. It's really easy to spot a home health patient's home. First of all, it's gonna be that house where all the newspapers are piled up up front at the end of the driveway, either because they can't walk there and pick them up or because they've been in the hospital like Mr. Allen. The grass is often not cut. There's often clutter around. There's often safety hazards. Let's meet Mr. Allen and see what other clues we can find. Mr. Allen, it's Tammy, the nurse. Okay, wait, wait a minute. It takes me a while to get to the door. Darcy, Darcy, can you, ne never mind. I just remember Darcy's not here today. While I'm waiting for Mr. Allen to come to the door, I can actually see through his screen door uh, that it's taken him a while to get here. He's a bit disheveled. So I'm gonna take my opportunity to pull up my functional scoring guidelines and just remind myself of some tips. First of all, I know for PDGM, we're looking at grooming, dressing upper and lower body, bathing, toilet transfers, the ability to ambulate and transfer and the risk for hospitalization. I can already see he's probably at a higher risk for hospitalization simply due to his environment. And I remember what the therapist taught us about this. It's the ability to perform safely, not what the patient is actually doing. Um, and I can already see that Mr. Allen's not very safe. He's left his walker back there at his chair and he's pretty much hobbling to the door. I wanna make sure that I address that when I get in the home. Looks like I still have time to pull up the access room by room assessment for functional OASIS items and just review clues that I'm gonna to need to look for in the home. I can see that for ambulation, I need to see if he's safe or if he needs verbal cues for safety. He certainly does. Is he at a risk for hospitalization? Would it surprise you if he ended up in the hospital um, in the next week, judging by the way he's coming to the door, it would not surprise me if he had another fall. When I get in the bathroom, I'm certainly gonna be looking for the presence of a raised commode seat, um, the fact that he may have a towel rack or a toilet roll holder that he's using um, to get himself up off of the commode. I'll look for his grooming supplies and where his clothes are at. These are all clues that's gonna be a a great way for me to determine OASIS without asking him a single question. Let's go on in and meet Mr. Allen. Mr. Allen, I'm Tammy. I'm with ABC Home Health. Were you able to get those items ready for me we spoke about on the phone? Wow, you're having ice cream for breakfast. That looks like breakfast for champions. We, we spoke on the phone? When? Uh, oh yeah, it's melting, so I'm gonna finish eating it. That's okay, you finished eating it. We spoke yesterday. Oh yeah, yeah, I do remember. It, it, I did it right then because I would forget if I didn't. It took me two hours, maybe miss Law and Order show on TV. I'm sorry you missed your favorite show. I'm gonna try to get in and out of here in an hour. But before we do, Mr. Allen, can you show me where your restroom is? I'm gonna need to wash my hands before every visit so I can make sure I keep you safe in your home. Okay, Darcy, Darcy. Where, where's my walker? Oh, never mind. I don't need it anyway. You're going to have to go slow, though, to follow me in. I will, Mr. Allen. And are you hurting? You're having trouble getting up out of that chair. Uh, no, it just takes me just a little while to get going. All right. More clues. He forgot, again, that Darcy wasn't there. Also, he's hurting. Obviously, he's grimacing. He forgot to get his walker again. I think I'm gonna let him just hold on to my arm as we walk down the hall. Oh, Mr. Allen, I see that you have grab bars installed um, along your hallway. Oh, oh yeah, my church put those in for me because I kept falling when I was walking down the hall. That's great. Mr. Allen, who is Darcy anyway? And is, is she not here today? Uh, oh yeah, Darcy comes some mornings and gets my breakfast ready and helps me get dressed. Uh, I only get three hours a week. Can you believe that? I, I guess I'm just not supposed to eat or get dressed the other days. Mr. Allen, we'll see if we can address that. I'm going to go ahead and wash your hands, but as I'm washing, if you need to sit down, you seem a little short of breath. Um, I see that your um, bathtub hasn't been used in a while. Does Darcy help you get your bath? 
as much as you can. I, I sit here on the toilet and wash off the uh, best I can. I, I just get so winded, I can't, I can't stand up and do it. Mr. Allen, do you wear oxygen at night? Oh, oh yeah, I have one of those newfangled machines in the, my bedroom back there. I, I wear it at night if it gets bad. I see you have some shirts hanging here, and that little t-shirt might get cold today. Can I help you put one of these shirts on? Yeah, would you do that? I don't like any of those, though. Let's let's go to the bedroom and get one out. Okay, Mr. Allen, but first I see your urinal's full. Can I go ahead and empty that for you? Oh, yeah. Darn, I forgot to bring it to my chair this morning. I have a can in there. I guess I could, I could use that. So, sometimes I just don't get enough warning these days. That happens to many people that take the same medicines you have and in your condition. It can even happen with bowel movements. And I see there's a pack of adult briefs over here to the side. Do you have issues with your bowels as well? Uh, yeah, I, I do sometimes. I, I irritated bowel acts up. I got that IB something, other they call it. Yeah, that's IBS. Let's go ahead and we'll start walking onto your bedroom. Again, multiple clues. He's incontinent of urine and bowel. He's not able to bathe himself independently. The bathroom is not safe. Um, he's short of breath and he requires oxygen. Multiple Oasis questions I've already answered and it's not even been 15 minutes. Mr. Allen, let's get one of the shirts out of your closet. Can you reach in there and get the one you want? Uh, oh, I'm trying, but it's crazy arthritis won't let, let me lift my arms up. That's that's why these clothes are all in such a mess in here. How about this one, Mr. Allen? And I see you have some house slippers in here, too. Um, can you put those slippers on? We really want to protect your feet because you are diabetic. Mm, okay. Mm, I just can't reach my toes this morning. Anyway, that's halfway on. I guess that's better than nothing. Let me help you with that, Mr. Allen. We don't want you to trip or fall. So I'll, I'll help you go ahead and get those on. And I'm gonna inspect your feet while I'm at it. Being a diabetic, our nurses are gonna check your feet anytime they come and visit. Also, I'm gonna get an occupational therapist to kind of help you with some aids that'll help you groom because it looks like you're having some difficulties with that. And we'll get that aid in here started on the days that Darcy isn't here. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, I've really went downhill since my wife ran away with that young so-and-so that used to cut her grass. Now I don't even get my grass cut anymore. All right, Mr. Darcy. Well, let's make our way to the kitchen. I just want to take a peek in there. Again, multiple clues as we're walking back down the hallway. He's not able to groom upper or lower body. Um, we definitely have some safety hazards. Oftentimes, this is where patients have falls. I definitely want to consider a, a medical social work referral for him and see if we can get some assistance in cleaning up some of this cluttered in order to prevent a fall. As we go to the kitchen, we're looking for more clues. Mr. Allen, who cooks for you? Well, I told you my wife ran off. No one cooks. There's that man that comes and delivers meals every once in a while, and I, I get some cans from the cabinet when I can get them down. Well, what did you have for dinner last night? Uh, I that, uh, but I had some donuts or something else good this morning. My daughter dropped them off. I think that was ice cream, and it did look delicious, but maybe not the best because your blood sugars have been elevated. Let's take a look at those meds now while you sit down. Before we do, let me tell our audience about some other clues that I got from your kitchen. So we know he's probably not got an adequate diet. He has no meal recall. He's not compliant with this diet. And he's got multiple people outside the home bringing food in to include Meals on Wheels and his daughter. All Oasis clues. And again, we're not at 15 minutes yet. Mr. Darcy, while you're sitting there, do you mind looking at this medication label? And reading that for me? Oh, no, I can't see. Uh, I, I've not been able to get my prescriptions done in five years. I, I can't get to the eye appointments. Uh, I, I can barely see how to turn on that TV even with that big button on that thing. All right, Mr. Allen. Well, we're just going to 
have a few more questions for you, and I'm going to write this down and continue to review your medication. But I should be done in about 15 minutes. All right. Well, if you can just hurry up, uh, I want to get the TV back on. I think Law and Order is coming on again. We'll do, Mr. Allen. And that was an example of how you can get 90% of your OASIS questions answered in 15 minutes or less. Reading medication labels is a great way to test vision. It's also a great way to test healthcare literacy, which is our patient's ability to learn. We are so glad you joined us today in our learning lab, and we invite you to visit us at access.com. Download our resources. You'll find our OASIS 15-minute uh, OASIS. You'll also find our PDGM functional scoring items, many COVID items that will help your agency be compliant with all the new regulatory guidelines. And all of that is available to you free through your partners in care at Access. Any questions or comments, please feel free to email me at tross at access.com. Thank you, and thank you, Mr. Allen.